In this video, we're going to be taking a look at four motion design logo techniques which you can use in your next project. Hi, hope everyone's doing well. My name is Shul Gonzalez from Animation Deconstructed and if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you know when I release new videos. So I wanted to show you four easy, clean and effective motion design techniques for your next logo animation. Let's jump straight into the tutorial and get started. First, we're going to be taking a look at the circle reveal. And for this exact example, I'm using a circular logo, but you can use whatever shape logo and it will work for your exact circumstance. Now, in order to create the circle reveal, we're going to deselect everything and we're going to come up to the top here by the ellipse tool. I'm going to double click this to create our circle. And you, what you want to do is turn off the stroke. So come here, say no stroke. Make sure that your fill is a solid color and I'm going to make this black. Then I'm going to drop down the ellipse and drop down the ellipse path and come over to size. I'm going to unlink these two and make this something like 600 by 600, which will be easier to use. Then we're going to select the layer and press the S key to bring up the scale. And at zero, I'm going to scale this right up. Take over the whole screen going to keyframe it and just move over around a third of a second. Then I'm going to come down to zero and then I'm going to ease the first keyframe by pressing F9. Now I want to add some more easing to this and this might be good enough but uh, if we just click the curves and make sure that you are under the edit speed graph and we're just going to take this first one and just drag it forward a little. And you should have something like this. Click the curves button again and let's just press play. The next thing we're going to do is let's just duplicate this up to create a little pop of another circle coming up and uh, want to press U, delete that keyframe and then I want to turn it back on. So we're starting at zero, move over to one second and 10 frames. So another kind of 20 frames forward and just so you know I'm working on 30 frames per second in my composition and I'm going to scale this up. We'll take it to about 44. The other thing I want to do is actually take this fill off so we're going to click this off, add a stroke to this and then just make sure your stroke is actually set to white. And at this large size I want to take my stroke up until it fills everything out. The next thing I want to do is just press U twice and this will enable us to see what we've changed on this layer. So I'm going to go to the stroke which is now highlighted. We can keyframe that, move that keyframe back so it aligns with our scale and then just take this down to zero. Now we can select all the keyframes, hit F9 and then bring up the curves again. With the selected, I just want to pull back on the last one so that it comes to a slow end. If we just press play here, you can see we're creating this pop animation. And then we can just close up our curve editor and what we want to do is we want to bring in our logo. So I'm going to take that and drop it above everything else. At about one second, so I want to overlap this animation slightly, I'm going to press the S key, take this down to zero and keyframe that. And then I'm going to move over to one second and 20 frames. So we're moving over in the same increments all the time. I'm going to scale this up, say about 65, and we should see that's about the same size as the circle. And then move forward another 10 frames to two seconds and just take this down to 62 for me and just select all these keyframes, hit the F9 key, bring up the curve editor and we're going to follow that good practice that we have just by selecting this one and just bring this out slightly. The second technique will be taking a look at the logo type reveal. So what I've got here now is just two layers of text. You can either bring this in from Illustrator or you can create the text in After Effects and just come to the top here with the text tool, type in, change your paragraph to left align to make sure that you're typing to the right and you can align these two and just scale it up. And you can use one layer of text or two just like I am. 
So what I want to do next is create a null object, which will be able to be the parent of both of these. And let's just move this into alignment with the text. And I'm going to select these two layers and just pick whip the null. Let's rename this null object text null. And now if this null moves, the text will follow it. The other thing I want to do is parent the null to the logo. So when the logo moves into place, the text will actually follow that as well. Now the secret to this kind of animating in is that we need to create what is known as like a window that this will move into. And that is just by creating a rectangle above here, which will say this is where our text should show. And our stroke is way too big. So we're going to take off the stroke. And we're going to add a solid fill. And this should encompass the whole text. Let's just rename this mask and just hide it for now. And we'll parent this to the logo layer. So the final thing I want to do is start animating this. So with the logo layer selected, I'm going to press the P key. And at two seconds, I'm going to start the keyframe and then I'm going to move over just less than a second. So let's just say about 25 frames forward. And then we're going to move this back. And that looks about right. The other thing I want to do is just bring up the position for the null. Turn on the keyframe here we are, where we are happy. Come to the first frame and then we will pull this over behind the logo. Now what we need to do is actually tell this to look at that safe area, which was that mask and hide it when it's not in that area. So easy way to do this is to select one of your text layers, go to effects, go to channel, go to set mat, and then we're going to select the mask and ch change this to alpha channel if it's not there already. And you'll see already this one's disappeared. Now we can control C this to copy, select the other layer and control V to paste and we'll have our animation. Last thing we need to do is just follow the same curves which we have with the others and I'm going to select those layers, press F9, go into the curve editor and just pull this back. Before we move on, I'd like to tell you about the RTFX generator extension. If you're needing to save time on your next design project, this could be the plugin for you. It has a very simple drag and drop extension and almost all the effects are hand drawn to give a fantastic end look to any project. It's extremely versatile and has a place in any game, motion design and social media animation you are looking to create. I'll leave a link in the description as well as another motion design animation extension which you might find more tailored to your needs. These are however affiliate links, so it is a great way to support the channel if you decide to buy through these links. Jumping back into the third and fourth techniques, we're going to be taking a look at adding motion elements to this animation. And I'll be using Particle World to make this an easy job. And then we're going to finally add some glow to just pull everything together in the final animation. So let's add the glow first. I'm going to right click, go new adjustment layer. This should appear at the top of your composition. And I'm going to go to Effect, Stylize and Glow. And then let's just take up the glow radius. So I'm just going to drag this up to about 28. And I only want this to affect the circle as it comes in. So I'm going to duplicate this glow just once more. And I'm going to take the threshold up to about 98. And then take this radius and just pull it up to about 100 and 180, 170. Around there should be good. And the way we're going to animate this is just by pressing the T key for opacity. Let's uh, find a good area to actually animate this on. So about one second should be good. Turn the keyframe on, move over to 20 frames and take that down. And we can just easy ease this for simplicity. The final thing we're going to do is create a particle system for the motion elements. And I'm going to come over to my composition, press new composition. I'm going to create our triangle. So let's call this triangle, change the size, turn it by 600. And then you want to come over to the rectangle tool, go to the star poly tool, double click this, 
and then just drop down to get some options so we can change this. So I'm going to change this to polygon. I'm going to change this to three sides. Let's take the fill off and let's put the stroke on, remembering that we had this really high so we can take this down and then we can scale this just interactively in the viewer and that should be good for our triangle. And we can just drop this triangle onto our composition and we'll hide it so that we can use it in our particle system. So I want the motion elements to be animating just below the logo. So I'm going to go to layer, new solid. Let's call this motion elements, press OK. And I'm going to come over to effect, simulation, particle world. And you'll get this kind of look right in the beginning. So we're going to change a few things. I'm going to say birth rate. Let's take this down to one. We don't need as many. Uh, let's take away the physics because we don't want the gravity. Take that down to zero. Let's change the particle for now. So line, come down to texture disk. And we're going to go to the texture. We're going to pick our triangle and you will start seeing this happening. Now I only want this to happen as our text comes in to the scene. So at two seconds, let's move over this layer to start and then just move forward a few frames. I want to change a few colors here. So let's change this to a light blue and I'm going to animate it to white as it gets to the end of its life. Let's also just push up the max opacity so we can see it at 100%. Something else I want to do is just change the size of this emitter. So we can do that in the viewer here. And I'm going to make the same size as my logo. And I just want to come over to the longevity. Let's just drag this forward just slightly. And then keyframe the birth rate on. Let's press U. Move about three frames forward. Let's move that keyframe there. And then one more forward and turn this off. Something that we need to adjust is just how far these motion elements are flying and that will be under the physics tab as well and we just need to add some resistance to this. A little bit goes a long way with it so about let's say 1.6 and see how that goes. And we should be good. So try out any of these motion design logo animation techniques in your next project and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you want to carry on watching, there's a few videos that are going to pop up. Take a look at them. Otherwise, keep animating and until next time.